Hello and welcome to Computer Vision Explained for Beginners. I am Kashif Murtaza, instructor in AI Sciences. And in this short tutorial, we are actually going to see what is computer vision. And in particular, um, how this field computer vision is different from image processing as well as computer graphics. We will also see some of the some of the hot areas that are particularly known as being the fields of computer vision. I mean, you can turn a problem into, or, or you can argue for, a, for any kind of problem to fall in any kind of domain, um, but there are certain kind of problems that are, that, are, that are known as to be specific for specific kind of fields. So I will discuss those problems that uh, fall under the umbrella of computer vision field. And at the end, we will also um, we will also see a computer vision library uh, in Python that is mostly used for computer vision kind of tasks. So let's dive in. Um, first of all, what is computer vision? So um, and and later we will see uh, what is image processing and uh, computer graphic graphics to actually uh, get a look and feel how computer vision is is significantly different from the other two fields that may look uh, much similar at, at, at the first glance. So in computer vision, what happens is, uh, so consider for example, that's a computer vision system. This is some computer vision system, CV system. Uh, it takes, sometimes it takes an image or maybe multiple images. Let's uh, consider for example, it say, takes an image and this computer vision systems uh, basically uh, output a bunch of symbols um, and um, maybe one symbol maybe several symbols or maybe um, for this particular image it actually uh, the the output of computer vision system is not necessarily another image it may be for example uh, in in case of object recognition or object detection it may be for example there exists an object here and the output of the system might be the class category, which is like, let's say person. Uh, that's one in output. The other output is the bounding box, for example, the X coordinate, Y coordinate, and width and height of the person. For example, 22, 47, um, maybe width and height in this particular image coordinates, maybe 60 and uh, 41, maybe. So these are the outputs and maybe several outputs like these. So computer vision system normally uh, inputs an image and outputs certain decisions. Uh, one, kind of, uh, one kind of phrase that is often, um, that is often um, tied up with computer vision is um, computer vision actually solves the problem of what is where in the images. So given images, if you can solve so where this um, what can be any anything any object um, and where uh, normally means uh, what are the what is the position of the object or multiple objects in in different kind of images um, so um, the take home for this slide is uh, computer vision actually takes an image and more generally a list of image a list of images so maybe there are several images and um, so again, the, the video is also a list of images or the, the list may not be the, the list may contain images that may not belong to the same video, but in general, it actually accepts a list of images and generate um, a symbol or a symbol table or, or something like that. Um, here, if you see, for example, uh, in this particular uh, animation, the input is uh, a list of images, uh, all are 2D images, and the output is a full 3D model of the of the images. Obviously, there is some overlap in the success of images, but here the input is really the images and the output is a 3D map, three-dimensional map. And this particular kind of problem is uh, very, very famous in computer vision, sometimes known as 3D reconstruction. Um, yeah, so input is image or a list of images and the computer vision system actually generates uh, out as an output certain kind of symbols. In contrast, in, uh, in uh, image processing, what happens is, um, let's say this is image processing system. 
In contrast, what happens in image processing system or the problems it really tackles uh, is the input is image or a list of images again. And um, the output of this system is also another image. Consider, for example, you have an image and you want to sharpen the image. You want to highlight the, um, the details of the image where the, where the differences uh, in the nearby are higher. You want to stretch the contrast of the image pixel by pixel. Uh, so the in input will be image and the output of the system will also another image, uh, the contrast version, or maybe you want to blur the image and the output is the blurred image. Maybe you want to apply some geometric transformation. For example, you want to rotate the image or you want to rescale the image, zoom in, zoom out kind of impacts and several of, or, or maybe you want to apply some morphological operators. For example, you have, let's say you have binary image image containing only zero and one, two different kind of colors, and you want to kind of skeletonize the image or you want to dilate or erode or, or some kind of details you want to find out. But uh, at the end of the day, it will, it will, it will take the, a list of images or one image and it generate uh, the corresponding list of images or, or one image in, in general. So most of the image processing systems, they actually enhance uh, transform the intensities as well as the positions of different pixels of image and normally this happens pixel by pixel um, in, in the image processing systems. Um, another related field is computer graphics. In computer graphics, um, computer graphics is sometimes um, referred as the field which is uh, inverse of computer vision. So think about this as a computer graphics system. In computer vision, um, the computer vision system takes image and outputs a symbol or a set of symbols. In computer graphics, it actually accepts some set of symbols, some set of symbols, and it actually generates an image. So for example, let's say you want to build an image of a particular character, and the character has certain kind of attributes. So you, in the, in the computer graphic system, you set up these attributes, for example, the nose length, the face height, the lip length and stuff like so. And at the end, you will generate an image that is an uh, image of a particular face, depending upon these kind of attributes. So um, that's the, the, the key difference between uh, computer graphics, image processing, and computer vision. Now that we have um, a good distinction uh, among these different kind of fields, let's dive in and see some uh, very famous kind of problems that, di that, that fall under the umbrella of computer vision, um, computer vision systems. One most uh, important problem or the focus of most of the computer vision literature is object detection. Um, by object detection, um, generally we mean given an image, we want to highlight, we want to detect uh, different kind of objects. For example, there is some object, let's say a cat. There is another object, let's say uh, an umbrella. And there is some other object, maybe a bicycle and stuff like so. Object detection uh, loosely refers to as finding out the object, uh, classifying its category, it may be a cat, dog, or something, and highlighting the position or the tight bounding box in most of the cases uh, if the object is, is, to be, is to be reported, if the boundary is to be reported as a bounding box. Otherwise, you can have other geometric structures for the, bounding for the boundary of the object. So classifying the uh, category of the object, highlighting where the object is. Uh, and if there are multiple objects for, at different scales, uh, by scale I mean for different sizes, the objects in the image may have different sizes and different orientations. The, the goal of the object detector is actually to highlight all of those. Maybe the objects are overlapping. Uh, maybe one object has certain uh, details that are occluded by another object. Um, so, so that's the problem of object detection. In object detection, you may want, for example, face detection falls under the object detection. Uh, person detection, so for example, you are given a video. Video is basically a stream of images. You may want to detect per whenever the person comes, or you may want to detect vehicles and several other classes. Uh, there are several other classes of objects. These are just the examples. Object detection is a very, very famous and very interesting kind of problem, and it has a lot of applications, real-world applications. 
um, that are available. Classical object detection and recognition kind of techniques, they rely on low level edge detections, uh, boundary detections or edge detections uh, or kind of uh, techniques like geometric shape, shape detection using Hoff transforms or um, I mean ransack based algorithms and, and several uh, of these kind of stuff. But recently, uh, because more and more data is now becoming available, recent techniques for object detection, they rely on deep learning, and particularly the convolutional neural networks. But at the end of the day, whether you are applying some classical techniques using some low-level filtering, or you are using an end-to-end -end, uh, learning, like using convolutional neural networks, the object detection problem stays the same. I mean, you're given an image, detect all the objects, and detect their positions. Possibly the objects might be occluded. And the categories of different objects, they can, they can be, for example, hundreds or, or maybe thousands. So that's one kind of problem that fall under the umbrella of computer vision and sometimes most interesting problem, object detection. By the way, this, this most recent object detector that is really famous these, day, famous these days is known as YOLO, you only live once. So if you get a chance, do go through this YOLO, that's a beautiful object detector. Um, next problem um, that um, is really interesting is object cracking. Uh, again, the object may have maybe a face, it may be a person, maybe a vehicle, or any other object, or maybe any object of interest, and you want to track that object. Normally in these kind of systems, the input is a video, which is a stream of images, and uh, you want to uh, track a particular object across time, where the object goes in the whole stream. So for example, there are two kind of, uh, there are two kind of um, setups here. One that whenever a new object appears, regardless of its category, its class, just highlight that object and then track it out. And the other setup is you, uh, the, the interactor or human manually highlight a particular object or a set of objects, sometimes known as the objects of interest, and only those objects, they should be tracked over the over time. Um, and uh, interestingly, um, one may think that object detection, uh, once the object detection is uh, done in a very stable manner, object tracking is just uh, detecting objects in the successive frames. Uh, but what happens in object tracking is that um, although it relies uh, partially on object detection, but object tracking it's, uh, itself has its own kind of algorithms uh, because detecting object in each and every frame in the video will make the um, will will make the uh, whole tracking process very very slow. So that's one is it will be very slow, and two uh, from the previous frame whatever detection uh, results you come up with, if you independently detect the object in the next frame, um, so you will uh, you are throwing away some of the information or processing. Uh, that you have done in, in, in the previous frames. So throwing the information. So, uh, so keeping the information from the successive frames um, actually makes the tracking uh, much more fast. And there are a lot of algorithms that actually uh, do this object tracking, real-time tracking, um, that does not uh, do uh, frame detections at every frame. Although there are certain algorithms that actually do frame detections after, after, for example, a particular uh, jump in time. They do the detections again to rectify their tracking results, and then they move on. One such tracker is known as a uh, training learning detector, TLD. It's very famous. But there are a lot of other uh, detectors like the object tracking using Kalman filters and stuff like so. So although it looks, um, looks kind of dependent on object detection, object tracking has its own set of algorithms and that's a very interesting problem uh, that falls under the computer vision. Um, I will discuss one other problem um, which, is, uh, the, which is the problem um, which can be tied up very tightly with computer vision. Uh, people may argue that object detection and object tracking, they both fall under, for example, machine learning paradigm or stuff like so. Um, but for this problem, like 3D reconstruction, um, 
they, this is purely in uh, in the field of computer vision, sometimes known as the 3D computer vision. Actually, Hartley and Zisserman, uh, let me let me mention here, Hartley, Richard Hartley and Zisserman. Let's see if my spellings. They they have written the whole book on on the topic, which is um, multiple view geometry in computer vision, and the whole book actually one way or the other discuss this kind of problem, which is the 3D reconstruction. So the idea here is that given an image or a set of images, the, the system, which is the 3D reconstruction system, actually generates the 3D points. Um, image is actually projection of three-dimensional space. And the reverse of it, given a two-dimensional image, and image itself is a two-dimensional thing, given a two-dimensional thing, if you can find out the three-dimensional geometry back, uh, maybe the relative geometry with respect to certain object uh, object origins, or maybe absolute geometry with respect to a fixed uh, world coordinate system, but that problem is known as 3D reconstruction and is very famous and sometimes really required. Think, for example, you want to build a system that actually uh, you want to wear certain kind of uh, clothes, branded clothes, and you want to see whether they fit on your body very well or not. And let's say you want to, uh, you, uh, you want to build a system that allows you to check the body fit of a particular clause, uh, clothes um, depending upon a mobile app or something like that. Um, so for example, you select a particular kind of t-shirt, for example, and you just want to see how the t-shirt will look like on your body without actually wearing the t-shirt. That actually requires the 3D model of your body. Um, well, if 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 this is only you uh, who is really an interesting person, one can one can manually mark or model your body. But if you want to if you want to spread your business in millions of people around, you cannot go and actually mark the body manually. What you can do is you can take certain pictures um, of the body, and you, then you actually build a 3D model about for that. Um, and this uh, 3D deconstruction problem can be multi-camera in which the image was taken from several cameras. Um, single camera, sometimes called single view reconstruction, uh, where the image is taken by only one camera. And both of these uh, setups can be with the static camera or with the moving camera. It's a very, very interesting problem. Um, last, I should mention one very powerful framework um, or package that is available in Python, sometimes known as OpenCV. It has uh, it is available uh, in several languages in C++, in Java, in C Sharp, uh, and in Python as well. So let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look at in a very sim simple example of let's say edge detection in OpenCV, just to uh, give you a look and feel how the object detect uh, how OpenCV actually works. So let's go in Python and uh, see the. So let's go in Python and see how uh, OpenCV actually works. Um, so let's import certain packages. Import CV2. That's for OpenCV. Obviously, you have to install OpenCV. OpenCV does not um, appear as pre-installed in MATLAB. So mat another library matplotlib just for plottings and image displaying dot by plot as plt. So let's load these packages. Um, let's see if we have a certain image as a data set. Yes, this image is available. So let's pick up this image and let's see how actually um, can we read this image so m is equal to cv2 dot m read and here you certainly just you uh, actually mention the path of the image and the image is read now you can um, you can obviously display the image plt plt dot m show uh, what this uh, opencv does is it, it actually reverses the channel of rgb to bgr but let me just display the image as it is um, so you can now see the image like this, although the original image has different kind of channels. Let me actually uh, rectify that uh, channel. So plt.mshow um, cv2.cvt convert um, color, convert color. So convert color of my original image from cv2.color underscore bgr 
to RGB. Uh, and now, uh, if you see the image, it will look like the original form. I mean, the different libraries, they read uh, image in RGB or BGR format. Let's actually detect the, um, let's actually detect the um, edges of this particular image using OpenCV. Let's just do that. So image, edge image, let me call that as E equals um, CV2 dot canny that's one very famous edge detector uh, edges are the pixels in the image boundary in the image where the intensity or the boundary i mean they define the boundary where they where the intensity in the neighborhood changes very abruptly i mean very very large change in the in the neighborhood so cv2 dot cvt color um m cv2 dot color BGR to gray. So that's G-R-A-Y gray. Then we have to give certain thresholds. Um, uh, what is the minimum value for the gradient magnitude? What's the maximum value for the gradient magnitude? Let's say two, uh, 50 and 200. And that's E. Um, e is there. So let's see PLT dot M show E. Uh, C map as let's say gray. So what you will now see is that the image with uh, the pixels that are highlighted are those pixels that are kind of uh, boundary pixels. Um, so you can explore this OpenCV more for several computer vision tasks. Um, so um, that's about it. Um, if you have liked this video, pre please press the like button and subscribe our channel and share this video to with your friends hope to see you next time